Now joined by a man that needs no introduction, but we'll give him one anyways. It is the All-American Lifetime Longhorn, Jackson Jeffcoat. Jackson, you're in Miami picking up the actual trophy for getting that Hendricks Award. What was that moment like for you to finally get the hardware that goes along with that prestigious award? Man, it, it was extremely special. Uh, I, I was speechless when I had it first because it was something I kind of dreamed of, something I wanted. I mean, because it's the Ted Hendrick Award is the best defensive end in the country award. And to meet Ted Hendricks, it was, it was a great opportunity. And when you look at that award, what will you reflect on as far as what it means and what it reflects from your career at Texas? Well, a lot of perseverance and a lot of um, hard work. I had to work my butt off. There's a lot of times that I, I, might, I've got, I got injured and had to come back. And so I realized that I, I, I didn't need to take things for granted. So that was something that I saw and I, I was so excited to have it. You see all the video, some of the pictures and photos as well. And it was a family affair. Everybody was there from your family. And you can almost just sense the support from them just looking at the video and the photos. What do you have to say about what they have meant to your career to this point? Well, my family has supported me through the ups and the downs. They've always been there. I mean, and that's one thing that, that's that been special to me. They, they've they always been there to encourage me, sending me Bible verses, and just uplifting me when I was down. And, and, and they can they can tell when other people can't tell that I'm down. So they, they've really been there and they really supported me, even though they have other things I have to do, like my dad's coaching at Colorado. and But he was still there to talk whenever I needed to. Well, beyond your dad, it was a star-studded list that was there yeah. in Miami for this ceremony. What's the best piece of advice you received from some of these former pros? Uh, well, I was talking to Richard Dent, uh, Chris Dolman, and uh, Ed Tutal Jones, and they were all telling me, study your opponent. I mean, you're going to be playing the guys uh, that uh, you've seen what, for six years or so, so keep a notebook on your opponents and uh, make sure that you, you keep studying them. If you see something that worked on them, Try it, use it, and get after them. So that, that was the biggest uh, advice they gave me about the NFL. To what extent do you think you were doing that at your career here at Texas? I think I was doing a lot, but you do have so much turnover. The different guys are yeah. coming in, and you're seeing different guys every almost every year. So at uh, in the NFL, though, I mean, your guys, they might be at a different team. So you're going to see the same guys for a while. For you, you're getting ready to make that jump to see those guys on the NFL level. You've been doing a lot of hard work, though, to get in shape for that opportunity. What have you been doing to get you ready, really, for that pro day that's coming up next on Wednesday? Well, uh, different from the combine, I'm not doing any lifting uh, at the at the pro day. So mm -hmm. I just started working on my power lifts and stuff like that, my uh, more explosive lifts and heavier weights, and um, really doing drills, my position drills, because that's what I'm doing at the pro day. So I got uh, with my coach, Coach Cliff Marshall, and worked with him and did a lot of my position drills, and we did them hard. I mean, it was, basically, it was conditioning work. And then I'd get on the treadmill and do some woodway conditioning work. So I was doing, like, two conditioning drills a day. And you've been working out with Sam Ocho too, right? I haven't worked out with him, but he wor I'm working out at the same facility he worked out with at. He's actually rehabbing down in Arizona, but I've been staying in touch with him. So what was it about – what this program did for Sam Ocho that made you want to go to Cincinnati and be part of that? Well, not only do the coaches know a lot about the drills and know a lot about strength training, but, I mean, it's a Christian-based facility and that uh, we're working mind, body, and spirit, and that was big for me. And so uh, I, I jumped on it when I saw that. And so these guys are experts at what they do. And so the guy, Cliff Marshall, the, the trainer that I work with, he worked with Cincinnati, the Bengals. He was a strength coach there. And so he knows how to train guys. He has a lot of vets come in. And, like, Luke Keekley is the one guy that I worked out with a lot. The tackling he, machine. Yes, I worked out with him a lot and got a lot of good advice from him. So now what kind of advice have you been given as far as what you really need to show and the statement you need to make on Wednesday to help that NFL draft stock? Well, show them I'm in shape, show them I'm, that I can do linebacker drills, I can do my D-line drills, and just uh, stay low and uh, be confident when I'm doing my stuff. What's the biggest question you think you've gotten from NFL personnel as far as how they perceive you on that next level? They either ask if I'm big enough to play defensive end, they don't know if I'm big enough, uh, or and they, they don't know if I can play linebacker. That's the biggest thing. So I'm, willing, I'm excited to show them that I can play outside linebacker as well. Do you feel that that's what the future is holding more for you, outside linebacker or defensive end? Uh, like a rush outside linebacker. I think a lot of teams have been at, talking to me about being an outside linebacker rush guy. So that, I think that's what my future is. But 
I, I don't mind putting my hand on the ground either. Well, we see the NFL Combine video there. Mm -hmm. The numbers were fantastic across the board. Why wasn't there more buzz about Jackson Jeffcoat in Indianapolis? Oh, I guess that's how it goes. I mean, it, it, I'm not mad about it. It doesn't matter to me. I mean, I just keep my nose down and work. Um, but, yeah, I had some good numbers, and I, hopefully the scouts were able to see him, the coaches were able to see him, and hope they'll, just because there's not a lot of buzz in the media doesn't mean that Very the true. teams are not noticing. Because you've got the production, mm -hmm. you've got the numbers from the combine, and everybody that talks to you pretty much comes away saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Good young man that has all his stuff in order outside of football. Does it bother you, though, to know that some other prospects get greater publicity in the media for doing less as far as at the combine and on the football field as well? No, because uh, if I worried about that, it, it, would, uh, it would eat me up. So, like my parents always tell me, just give it to God and let him handle it. Uh, it's, it's not something I need to worry about. And control the things I can control. So that's what I'm doing, controlling the things I can control and just really taking care of the business I have. And the next step is the pro day here at the University of Texas on Wednesday. Jackson, it's been fantastic watching you through your career here at the University of Texas. Can't wait to see you Wednesday and with that NFL career as well. So we really yes, appreciate the time. Yes, Jackson Jeffcoat, lifetime Longhorn, All-American, on his way to the NFL.